everyone. Welcome to Garden Fork Radio. I'm your host, Eric. I have a YouTube channel and this podcast. It's an eclectic DIY show. This is a real eclectic DIY one. The question is, can you get a job, a new job, during the pandemic? And coming on the show is Rich G, who is an executive coach. He's been on a bunch of times. We have had several breakfast and lunch and diners. And welcome, sir. Welcome to the show. Eric, thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. And it's just so much fun to kick off the week talking to you. And you also, you actually watch Garden Fork, uh, the video show. I love watching you uh, make mistakes. <laughs> that was so polite. <laughs> yes. No, I love, I get so many great ideas. Uh, and, and the podcasts are great. Unfortunately, during uh, this time that we're in now, I'm not, I'm not listening to the podcast as much. I'm, I'm watching videos more. That I have noticed in the analytics, um, my views of videos have gone up and the podcast has gone down. I think because people are spending less time in the car and less time in the gym. You're absolutely right. The only time I listen to podcasts now is when I mow the lawn, is I put on headphones that cover my ears and get rid of the noise, and I listen to your podcast uh, while I'm walking around mowing mm-hmm. the lawn. So we, we've been talking uh, and emailing, and um, is it possible to get a job during a pandemic? No, not at all. No, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I, the thing I tell clients, and I speak in front of groups virtually two to three times a month, it is because business still has to go. Procter & Gamble still needs to sell Pampers. Companies are looking for people. And there was that initial like few months where everybody was in hover mode. Like, okay, we don't know what's going to go on here. Now we're, what, nine months into it, ten, almost 10 months into it. They're, they're, companies have to get back to some sort of run rate because their competition is. So the new projects that were put on hold, the new things that were going on, they need people for it. Second, there is churn in companies. People leave. People leave for uh maternity leave people uh retire uh people leave for uh, your best people leave for other positions you have to replace those people you just can't uh power down each time you lose someone especially if it's a key position and so you have to replace those people i can attest to this uh of course i am not a corporate executive uh who uses zoom uh Everyone knows who I am, but my wife and my sister are big wheel executives. Uh, I'm all about women being in power because I think they run things better. And I am the support team for both of them. I'm their cheerleader. And they have both hired, uh, my wife has hired, I think, two people via Zoom. And I think my sister hired two or three people uh, via Zoom. So it's you can do it. And uh, Rich will tell us how. Absolutely. I mean, I I've just helped a client uh, about a month ago get a job with Facebook. It was eight interviews via uh, webcam Zoom, and it, it was it was tough. But the I always tell people a look for some of the best companies. I'm not saying like Facebook or Google or Apple. They're great companies. Go apply to them. Amazon, uh, but look for the companies that are performing well that are really hitting the mark their their stocks going up their earnings because these are companies that need people if they're growing one of the major engines of growth for a company are their people and they're constantly trying to hire people it's funny my clients now been working for them for over a month and uh they said that they need to hire eight more people you know for her team so it's just amazing how fast certain companies will hire. The problem is most people look at underperforming companies or they, they go on to job boards and job sites and they look at those jobs, but you're also competing with hundreds of other people applying to those jobs. And it's very frustrating. I have some thoughts on that because I have helped my wife with her Zoom calls and I mean, I have a background in film and video production. 
and when she first started, I'm like, the lighting here is all wrong. Yeah. And so I have a couple of geeky thoughts about this and you tell me whether I'm nuts or not. Um, if you're going to do a zoom interview, you know, you're being interviewed for a job via a uh, zoom or whatever app they're using. Um, you should first practice with a friend actually doing a zoom call. I thought, and yeah. what's incredibly important is very good audio. So you should consider, uh, Using earbud, an Apple earbuds with an Apple microphone has is very high quality, or um, a webcam with a separate mic, or even a headset like a like a USB headset. I think the audio is incredibly important, and a very good web webcam with proper lighting. Um, if you you can have a very soft light behind the laptop. No bright light behind, no, like a bright window. If you have a bright window behind you, you're going to be backlit and your face will be dark. And oh, I wrote something else down here. Um, no junk in the background. So your laundry, you know, folded over a chair or something is not a good look. You're, you, Eric, perfect. Those are incredible. Those are the same things I tell clients because right now, before the pandemic, you had in-person interviews. And so you had to look your best. It was all about body language and a lot of other things. And now you're trying to project your personality from an in-person interview over an electronic camera. And and so audio and visual is so important. Um, looking at the camera and not looking at yourself. One of the things I tell people is to hide the view of yourself. Don't look because we constantly look at ourselves and we critique millisecond to millisecond. And it's like, you don't need to look at yourself. As long as you're in focus and you're centered, get rid of, hide self view, get rid of yourself and just have them up. The oh, second. so when you're on the Zoom call, it it yep. sometimes will show the little video screen of what you are look, uh, what your camera sees. So you yes. want to turn off your the view of you on the Zoom call and just be focusing on the person. Absolutely, because you are so nervous already when you start looking at yourself constantly. It's like looking in the mirror for an hour. You start picking, <laughs> oh, I have a blemish here. Oh, you know, I have a nose hair. I have this. You start picking. Get rid of the hide self view. Then take their picture, their their image, and minimize it and put it right below the camera. So when because your your natural inclination is to look at their face and you want to see their face because you're going to react to their body language, their uh, facial expression. So you want to look at the camera and 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 really give your attention to that because the minute your eyes drift down to something that shows them that you're not paying attention. So you want to look at the camera uh, to the point where I tell people to get two post-it notes and put a little happy face <laughs> on the <laughs> left side of your camera and a little, uh, another post-it note that says smile because that's the other thing. Everybody has, not everybody, a certain amount of us have resting angry face. And that's yeah, that's not, the polite phrase. <laughs> yeah, that's the polite phrase. <laughs> you have resting angry face and you have to force yourself because when you smile, you sound different, you feel different. Yep. Um, it's, it's all different. If you can stand, yes. that's another thing because then you could use your hands a lot more when you're talking. Because sitting, you sound one way. Standing, you sound differently. Another big uh, fail I've seen is I, I have Apple products, which I really like. And the camera is above the screen on your laptop or your computer. And then I prop up my laptop on several of my biggest cookbooks. So the camera is at eye level to me. Yes. Because and. So otherwise I look like I'm looking down and then there's some laptops that the camera is, is at the hinge where the, where the monitor and the keyboard part connect. So you're looking down, you have a double chin and it's this weird angle looking down and it's a deal breaker for me. 
Absolutely. If you can see people's ceilings and everything else, it's it's just not a good thing. Uh, the the other thing that I tell people a lot to do is if you're if you think you're going to do a lot of interviewing, invest in like a Logitech um, webcam. Yep. Um, it's it's about a hundred dollars. It plugs right into your laptop. It's it you're going to get 1080 uh, p. I've actually jumped even higher because a large part of my business now, because I film videos, I do workshops, and I speak to clients using a camera, I have a Canon uh, EOS Rebel T6i. I have a real... Uh, you have a DSLR. Yeah, SLR hooked right into my computer, and I have a, they call it a nifty 50 uh, lens on it that... Um, puts my background into a, a light focus and then oh, I'm wow. sharp when I go on calls like networking calls everybody's asking oh my god what kind of camera do you have what kind of lens and I go it's a Canon you that's know, a you brilliant takeaway that is brilliant so it really works the other thing that I tell people a lot is ask permission to do things you know say do you mind if I take a few notes? So when you do avert your eyes, it's okay. You don't feel like you're not trying to write and stare at the camera at the same time. You can avert your eyes if you ask permission during an interview. And it makes it easier for you. So you're not like they think you're checking email and stuff like that. That's the other thing. Make sure all of your windows are closed except for Zoom. And your devices are turned off. Exactly. Email is a massive resource hog that will lower the latency of your webcam and, and the throughput. And it'll bitmap you and it might even uh, take a large part because it's constantly going out looking for email. So turn off all of your programs. Uh, tell your kids to stay off video games. Uh, you know, just tell everybody for the next hour. Don't use anything electronic. Exactly. Yeah, you're going to have to basically shut everyone off because you want what you want is what's called bandwidth. You want instead of a a teeny garden hose, you want a fire hose of data dedicated to this Zoom call because it's about a job, you know? You have to look your best. One of the things I've done with my computer is it has an Ethernet port. Yes. So I, I hook my Ethernet right up to my um, Wi-Fi my, router. My Wi-Fi router, and guess what? I'm getting one gigabyte of throughput. Yes. But, and that's it's so important. So you're always trying to look your best, dress the part a little bit. Um, it's up to you whether you want to wear a suit and stuff like that. But understand, it's all perspective and how you present yourself. I also. Um... I've been listening to, first of all, she has a show on PBS doing interviews, and she also has a podcast. It, her name is Kelly Corrigan, and I have just discovered her, and I think she's one of the most amazing thought leaders in the in the world, except, you know, you notwithstanding, Rich. Um, <laughs> but she just did a podcast with, um, I'm going to mangle... Um, Oh, I can't find the. Oh, Annie Jean Batiste, and it's about trusting your gut. And and Annie Jean Batiste is the head of product inclusion at Google, and she they talked all about how gut feeling actually doesn't work. So yeah. if you have a feeling that the call is not going well, stop thinking that because you have your perspective. And the person you're talking to, the group you're talking to, have a completely different perspective. And so um, she, uh, just Kelly Corrigan wonders. It's it's a great podcast, and she has a show on PBS as well. But um, it, So your perception, just keep in mind, you may think that this interview is going horrible, and it might be going just fine. And I have had that happen to me. <laughs> it's so important. The two things I tell clients all the time that hiring managers are really looking for and, and it, of course, it's experience and, and basic knowledge of the job. But they're looking for two things. Number one, they're looking for enthusiasm. They're looking for enthusiasm from you because they don't want to hire another person that's like the rest of their team that just comes in every day and does their job. They want to 
someone to come in with a full tank of gas, ready to go, excited about their job, excited about what they do, and is going to be a plus to their department. So that's one thing that all hiring managers look for is how enthusiastic do you present yourself? Do you smile? Is there energy? Are you projecting energy over? Do you know a lot about their company and their industry? Do you take time to understand it? Because that's showing enthusiasm. The second thing they're looking for is fit. They don't want to hire a jerk. They want to hire someone who's going to fit in on their team. Somebody that's easy to get along with, that is always saying, what else would you like me to do? That's that's a real, again, a real plus to their department because you talk to hiring managers like, look, I got five other people that are, you know, they just do their job. You know, they, they're not outstanding. I want to hire somebody that's going to radically change this department. And that's what people are looking for. So the more that you can communicate enthusiasm and fit over that webcam, the more likely you're going to get invited to a second and third interview. I was never, I was never a very good fit in the corporate world, um, as you can tell, <laughs> <laughs> but I have had some experience with it. And um, I, I've just found when I've hired, need to hire people for my contracting business or for Garden Fork, I need someone that can think on their feet and follow through with something. I can teach you what I need you to do. Yeah. So I don't really care about the college degree. I, I look for energy and someone who's not a downer um, because that's my job, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like there's a, a, a person I know in my neighborhood who has a job at a food place and I talk to them at, a couple times a week and they have such energy and drive and I keep telling them you you have so many skills that you could get out of this job you can go get a job. And they're like, how? I'm like, because you can, you can just, you're trusted. You have a brain, you can follow through on things. And that's projected just across the counter of a store, you know? Yes. So if you can project that on Skype, I think that's all the better. It's, it's so amazing. You run into people like that. I was getting my um, car, the emissions done at a local um, garage, like a gas station garage. And the guy said, oh, we could get it right in. It'll take about five minutes. And so I literally sit down, start surfing on my phone. <laughs> he walks in, he goes, you're all set. And I go, it's done? He said, yep. He goes, you mind if I ask you a question, Rich? And I said, sure. He goes, what can I do to get your business? Wow. And it caught me so off guard. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's a great question. I said, Show me. Uh, I'd love to uh, uh, give you some business. Show me what you can do for me. And he started presenting all these things. And my wife and I are getting our cars fixed there because he just asked the question. It's just stepping over and believing in yourself and what you can do. Go after the big jobs. Go after. People are afraid. Oh, I don't want to do that. And they just keep applying online and they keep right. getting denied. It's like you have to step out of your bubble and go after people. Yeah, that's how I've gotten jobs. Um, after college, when I moved back to New York City, I uh, was wanted to work in the photography world and the TV world. And I thought of all these creative ways. I would just cold call. I would just cold call people. And they didn't care about my portfolio. They didn't care that I had a college degree. They wanted to know if I could drive a truck in Manhattan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which I can do. <laughs> you just here's the secret to driving in New York City. You can't hesitate. And yeah. that's kind of like having to get a job. You can't hesitate. Yeah, you have to be bold. I tell people um, like Eleanor Roosevelt said many years ago, do one thing every day that scares you. And you have to take you have to be assertive. You have to take chances because finding a job is broken down to being in the right place at the right time with the right person. And yeah. if you want to call that luck, that's fine. If you want to call it opportunity, that's fine. You need to make your own opportunities. So um, you have a class about where you work with people to do all this, right? 
yeah, I just launched it. I've been coaching for the last 14 years, and I found that there's a whole host of people that want more online stuff. And so I launched a class last month. It's called the Get That Job Boot Camp. And what it does is it allows people to work on, on demand. Uh, there are 45 in-depth lessons, about five hours of on-demand video, and about 40 plus downloadable resources that help you find a job. It takes you all the way from building up your job armor, which everybody needs because looking for a job sucks. It's awful. It's not fun. We're not good at it. So I help you build up that job search armor and then give you all the tools and techniques to get that job. And then I even throw in the first 90 days on the job, how to perform once you get that job. And it's all online and it works. And in addition, you get six months of live Zoom weekly coaching sessions with me. So they're group sessions with everybody. And I answer questions from the group. And it really works out nicely. I was reluctant about online classes until I finally signed up for one about how to improve my YouTube channel with uh, Tim Schmoyer from Video Creators. And he's he's a self-made guy like you. And he knows that world, much like you know your world. He knows YouTube. And I it was it was a chunk of money to sign up. And I'm like, okay, I'm making some money on YouTube. I should invest in myself. And I'm very frugal, as you know. <laughs> um and I and I took the plunge and it was with it was me and fifteen other people and I it was a Zoom call. It was, you know, kind of that Brady Bunch, you know, checkerboard Zoom call thing. But a couple takeaways for it was the step by step class, you know, the assignments were really great. I like the idea that you could check off stuff and then the next PDF or the next thing would come up. And then the Zoom calls we did with Tim, I thought having other people there would denigrate it. But actually, I learned from the other people's questions. And I also met people that are now friends of mine because we're both we're all doing the same thing. We're all trying to improve our YouTube channels. It's, it's so interesting that you say that because I get that camaraderie. First of all, when you're looking for a job, you're all alone. It's just you. Yeah. And being on a call with these people, you realize there are a lot of people out there. You know, I, I always group people. There are people who are going to look for a job and find a job immediately. And those are always the success success stories that you hear. Right. And then there are people that will never find a job and they're like permanently retired. Then there's a large group of people in the middle that are wandering along in the woods and going to these online classes gives you a structure it gives you a a, a a path to take do this then do this then do this and like like you having those weekly accountability sessions focuses you and keeps the energy up because you get depressed, you get frustrated. Frustrated is a huge term. You get angry when you work so long to get a job and then they say no. And then you have to start all over again. And so having people to work with and talk to you and give you ideas really helps out. I, I want to sign up and I don't even need a job. I'm like, <laughs> I just want to be around people. <laughs> It's, it's, it's literally 15 years of coaching encapsulated in five hours. I literally very succinct there. Each segment maybe runs five to 10 minutes, but then you have a to do, uh, you have homework and then you also get resources. Every section has a book. So if you want to go deep, deep, deep into interview skills or body language, I recommend a book for that. So you can go deeper into that. Oh, wow. So that's where the uh, resting angry face comes from. Exactly. <laughs> and I've yeah. I've totally seen that on people where they're like frowning. And I'm a member uh, uh, of a volunteer group and we have a Skype call. And I situate, we have a, in our apartment, we have some exposed brick walls. And so I, I put the laptop 
there and I have the brick wall behind me and I have a nice light behind the laptop and I smile and I have it propped up on books. And that's just for a Zoom call with a volunteer group, you yeah. know. But it's it is I see it in other Zoom calls and in that one where people are just kind of like rock rock and they're 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 just not clued in and I'm like, "Come on, we're come on, you got to pay attention here." <laughs> yes. It's it's so funny and I I've done uh, a lot of in-person uh workshops and the people that are looking at you with an angry face or they're you know, they're just making frowns. It, nine times out of ten, they'll come up at the end and go, I loved your workshop. <laughs> and, oh, geez. Yeah. And that, so whenever I go to a, I'm in a Zoom call or I'm at a workshop or at a talk or something, I always make it. I'm smiling and shaking my head and giving positive signals to the speaker to ensure that, you know, at least there's one person in the room that looks like, you know, they, they appreciate what they're saying. The other brilliant thing I thought you said earlier was to ask to take notes. Yeah. Because I see people look down and I'm like, are they looking at their phone? You know? Ask permission to take notes. Um, in interviews, per, in in-person interviews, I'd always ask, like, you know, if they offer water, take water. Because taking notes and drinking water is a great way to pause your your comment or your thinking because pausing is is a huge part of communication it shows that you're thinking through the question and and saying things like wow that that's a great question because sometimes we need those milliseconds to think of an answer and pausing to drink water or take a few notes and um even like asking in zoom you can open up a screen and say, let me show you how this looks, and then draw for them on the screen. You could do that sort of thing. Uh, if you have an iPad, you could do it immediately. So uh, I've always said sketching, uh, using a kinesthetic way to present information. Um, the other thing is show your hands. Uh, hands uh, contribute to the energy and say it's really three things and hold three fingers up and say, well, number one, it's this, number two, it's this. People like that energy because you're not getting that in-person experience, so you have to project your energy through the camera lens. Brilliant, brilliant. Now I wanna sign up for your class. Okay. <laughs> you know, cause that's Absolutely. weird, cause I, in my video work, um, we've kind of touched, we did some, we've done corporate stuff. I've done corporate stuff, which, um, can be mind-numbingly boring, but it pays really well. So <laughs> we would do it. But we would work with these executives that have had media training. Yeah. And they would their eyes would be locked to the lens and their arms are down at their waist. And I'm like, you look like a robot. Yeah. And they're like, and I said it in a nice way, and they're like, oh well, I've been taught to keep my hands at my side. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I guess that's what corporate corporate communications people want you to do, but you're you're not connecting, you know? Yeah, you're just not. And it, it's so important that uh, another thing I tell people to do is at the end of the call, they're like, well, okay, I think that's it. That's all the questions I have. Uh, uh, we'll probably be making a decision in the next week or two. And the person goes, oh, okay, okay, thank you so much. And they leave. And they sign off and the hiring manager is probably saying, I don't know if they want the job. Whereas I tell my clients, ask for the job. At the end, if everything sounds great, you say, Mr. Jones or Ms. Jones, thank you so much. This has been incredible. Everything that you've said is exactly what I'm looking for. I want this job. I, I, I could see myself doing this job tomorrow. I could hop right in and do it. I just wanted to let you know that. Again, it's showing them enthusiasm, saying, I want this job. Because I've interviewed people and they've walked out of the room. I go, I don't think they want the job. I want to hire the person that's asking for the job. So ask for the job. Oh, see, here's what I would do. I'd go, and they're like, okay, well, oh, we're done with our questions. And I go, I go, great, let me leave you with this. I want the job. Mm -hmm. And then pause. There's a pregnant pause there. 
This works really well in YouTube videos, by the way. Uh, I'm letting you behind the cur curtain here. But you keep looking at them and you just pause. And it there is a se there's some tension there, but also the last thing you said is starting to sink into their head. It's all Broadway. It's it all is. performance. It's a performance and you're performing. An interview is a performance. And they're seeing, you know, the questions are digging in and seeing how you respond under pressure. But it is performance. You're a performance. And if you're in sales or marketing and, and sometimes operations or upper management, a large part of how you communicate is part of that interview. They're seeing how you handle things. Yeah, it's... um. I wonder, could you be so bold as a, at the end of the interview? Well, thank you very much. And I go, I would, I could say something like, well, do you want me to come on Monday at nine or Monday at 10? <laughs> that might be a little presumptuous. You never know though. You never know. That might Things be a little pushy. Very well in interviews where people are hired on the spot. You know, they just, they don't want them, especially if it's a high value position and you're afraid that person's going to get another interview tomorrow and just be sucked away. So, wow. So let's, let, so let's reiterate about your class again. Cause I thought that was, it really has some value for people. Oh, it's, it's great. It's, uh, it's broken up. It's called the get that job Boot Camp, And I think, yeah, I could leave the, the URL below we'll leave a link in the show notes. Link it. It's it's get that job bootcamp.com, but it's made up of five modules. The first one is developing your confidence and presence. The second one is building and marketing your brand. The third is how to connect with the best people. The fourth module is deliver a great interview. And then the fifth is how to close the deal, negotiate and get that job. And then there's an extra credit module is your first 90 days on the job. And it really helps you develop communication with your new boss and uh, your your peers and your staff. If you have subordinates, it all help, it helps you throughout the thing. And there are a lot of other extra credit modules that help you with resumes and networking and evaluating companies. Um, there's just a lot. And I keep adding stuff constantly. Um, uh, extra credit modules and I'll keep doing it because it comes out of me and I just love adding more stuff to the product. Cool. And I'll, in the show notes here, I'll link to the webcam and a webcam light that um, are highly rated because that's, it's so important to just don't look like you're in an, a, a, the laundry room in your basement. <laughs> <laughs> yep, absolutely. Play with the lighting. I went out and bought some lights from Amazon. They were like $35. They were cheap. And uh, I just project them up off the, the, the uh, ceiling, and it brings perfect light uh, for me. That perfect lighting for Rich G. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> are, is, it's richg.com. Is that where you are? That's right. Rich G, R-I-C-H-G-E-E.com. Well, this was great. This was, uh, I don't really need a job, but I'm excited about it. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of people that need a job out there. And this is the type of thing that is, it's not that expensive and it really gets them, helps them develop that path. Yay. All right, cool. Thank you, my friend. Eric, thank you. Garden Fork Radio is produced in Brooklyn, New York by Garden Fork Media, LLC. Our executive producer is Jimmy Gooch. You can learn more about Jimmy and the custom hollow books he makes at hollowbooks.com. The music for our show is licensed from audioblocks.com and uniquetracks.com. Music.